Welcome to Inside Kern. I'm Katie Price. Inside Kern's goal is to show you the human side of Kern County government, the individuals who go above and beyond the normal calls to duty. In this episode, we'll take a look at the Kern County Probation Department's Gang Suppression Unit and their ongoing efforts to curtail gang activity in our community. And we'll take a look at the men and women of the Sheriff's Department search and rescue team. But first, the number of homeless people in our county is increasing every day. And a great number of those living on the streets are veterans. Each year, the Kern County Department of Veterans Services holds an event called the Veterans Stand Down. Its goal, to reach out to all veterans, especially our homeless veterans, to connect them with the services they need and to get them back on track in our society. This is our 10th annual event, and, and this event differs a little bit from the nine previous ones in that formerly we always had a multi-day event. We had uh, tents and cots set up here, and we could keep the veterans here for anywhere from two to three days. This year, because of the support, some of the support, the waning support from some of the units, because of the we relied heavily on our reservists to, to help, us, particularly with the tents and the bedding and things like that. And because of the deployments in that, uh, they're not able to, to give us the level of support that we had in the past. So what we did this year is that we brought the format down to one day, longer day than they had been in the past. Uh, we have all of the providers here that we have ever had in the past. In fact, we have more today probably than we've had previously. Uh, and the other thing we did that is we made this an event that was open not only to homeless veterans, but was open to all veterans. And, and what we were hoping to do there was to introduce some of the people who maybe weren't familiar with the, with the functions of some of these providers, particularly my office. Uh, and, and that maybe we could also uh, encourage some of the, the new veterans, uh, the veterans of the Iraq and Afghani wars to, to come in and, and uh, and visit with us and just learn a little bit about what their benefits and their entitlements might be. Well, first of all, you know, they, they sign up when they come in, before they come in the gate, you know, and they get registered, you know, and, uh, and they'll ask them at the gate what needs they have, and they'll give them a, a little checklist, you know, about yay big, a blue card, and, uh, and those guys will screen them before they come in to find out what their needs are, and they'll check off their needs, and they'll refer them to different places. And uh, the, while they're wandering around, if they look a little lost, I'll walk up and shake hands and say, hey, how you doing? And, do, you, do you need anything, you know? Uh, and, uh, and, and sometimes there's things that they need that they don't mention at the gate, you know? And they, they want to be a little more discreet about it. And they'll feel more comfortable talking to another veteran, you know, instead of somebody up there doing paperwork. I remember one morning waking up, I was, I was addicted to heroin, and it was about 1990. And, uh, and I, I remember waking up one morning thinking, oh my God, I gotta go out and, and find some way to hustle some money to get a bag of dope. And, uh, and I, I, was, I remember praying, saying, God, I really don't wanna have to go out and do this. And uh, so, but I got dressed and I went out and I went to the phone booth and I called the connection. Down in LA, you call the connection, they come to wherever you're at and they deliver it. So I'm, I'm waiting by the phone booth for the connection to come and black and white unit pulled up and uh, I thought they were gonna go get some coffee and donuts next door to where the phone was and instead they walked up to me and asked to see my arms. They, they knew what was going on. You know, I, I must have been like, you know, it was obvious to them and, and I thought I was being discreet, you know. And, and of course they took me to jail for having needle marks on my arms. Uh, I was addicted to heroin. And uh, in those days, uh, during those years, they give you, uh, 90 days in the county jail for having needle marks. And so I did 90 days. I got out. Three days later, the same two guys picked me up and put me back in jail for another 90 days. And, and that was the end of my heroin career. And uh, so I, looking back now, I, I, I believe that uh, my prayer was answered, but not the way I wanted. Just like when I went through rehab for the alcohol, which is when I finished, you know, when I, I finished that last term of 90 days, I, I, I thought to myself, well, alcohol is legal. So I started doing, I started drinking uh, 
and, uh, it, and, and it took a short period of time before the alcohol became just as addicted, you know, just as, as addictive as the heroin was, where I woke up in the mornings and I needed to drink, and I drank all day, you know, and occasional blackouts in the evenings. Uh, by that time, I ended up over here at Riverview Park across the river here, uh, living in the park, you know, homeless, and drinking all day. And uh, uh, any, by any means I can get, at least it wasn't as expensive as the heroin. I didn't have to go out and rob or steal or anything like that to, to you know, uh, do anything to get that. Uh, but uh, at some point, uh, I, it was in 1994 and it was the summertime, and I didn't have, even own a change of clothes. I'm living in the park and I'm walking down Beardsley Avenue with a 40 ounce in my hand. And uh, a black and white unit pulled up next to me. I believe it was the Highway Patrol. I, I'm, I'm not too clear, but I think it was the Highway Patrol. And he had his window down on the passenger side and he pulled up next to me. He says, you know, he says, I can take you to jail for that open container. And I stopped and I looked in the window at him, looked at him eye to eye and I said, if you want to put a roof over my head and feed me three squares a day, let's go. And he shook his head and drove away. And, uh, you know, at that point I knew, well, I, I thought that I was hopeless and helpless. And there, there was no help for me, you know, and I was, I was doomed to die, uh, dependent on some kind of chemical, whether it was heroin, alcohol, something. And, uh, and that's when I went and talked to the, uh, uh, social worker at the VA hospital and, and they sent me to Fresno for the, the rehabilitation and that you know that helped change my life. The stand downs were started uh, oh, 15 or 20 years ago down in San Diego and San Diego still carries them out. That was the first one. Uh, there are probably over 200 stand downs held throughout the country. In addition to my office, we also have uh, medical services here, both from the VA and Clinic of Sierra Vista. Uh, we have uh, veterans benefits counselors from the VA and from my office. Uh, we have mental health people here from, uh, uh, from our county, as well as human services. Uh, we have a legal clinic this year, which is, is not quite what we used to do at, uh, previously, because we had three and four days, we'd have uh, a court here where we'd be able to uh, resolve minor uh, infractions that the veterans had, and rather than them having to travel down to the Superior Court and, and, uh, and, and go through the formalities of, of that procedure, we had a, a less formal court here. Uh, we aren't doing that this year, but what we do have is a legal clinic, and we have lawyers here, and we have representatives from DBLA, and, and our, our hopes are is that they can receive advice and maybe referrals and uh, be directed to places where they can resolve some of their legal problems. We've got barbers here today, uh, several barbers over there giving haircuts. Basically, they come and they sit down, and we just introduce ourselves, and. Um, we just ask what kind of haircut they want, and then we spray them down with water, spray their hair down with water, and just section out the hair and start cutting. It's cool to just sit and listen to all of these guys and women tell um, stories about how they served and things they've been through, and it's nice. Anyone that comes in and gets a haircut, they walk out just feeling better about themselves, and it just makes you feel better, you know? You just get cleaned up, and feels good. I mean, it's relaxing too to get your hair done too. I love it. So. <laughs> you get to check her, you're all set. I have a very good excellent. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you gotta, you gotta be, find yourself again. And just, you just know, being in and out of the hospitals and having people that they want to help you and they don't. The only ones that do care when I don't tell them is I'm in the hospital. I just, those are the ones they worry about. They worry about me. I, I think most veterans don't know what's available. Uh, I didn't. I, I had no clue that I could go into a VA hospital and get help. Uh, most of us veterans, when we get out of the service, going to get help from veteran services or from the VA hospital or any of these services, that's the last thing on our mind. We want to get caught up on some lost time with our family or our friends 
uh, whether it be drinking and having fun or or buying a nice car and you know and getting caught up on some things that we've been missing out on you know uh, getting help for services last thing on our mind and and then years later we find ourselves needing a whole lot of the different services and not even knowing that they're available and so if a guy comes out here he gets an opportunity to find out what what services are available that he's been missing out on. Organizers say this year's event was a success, but much more needs to be done. Next up, the seven members of the Kern County Probation Department's Gang Suppression Unit is tasked with the daunting job of supervising known gang members on probation and gathering intelligence on gang activity for themselves and other law enforcement agencies. Every day they hit the streets with the goal of making Kern County a safer place to live. My name is Matt Kundinger. Uh, I've been working for Kern County Probation for about 13 years now, and I'm currently the uh, supervisor of the Probation Department's gang unit, or the uh, Gang Intervention and Suppression Team. We currently have uh, approximately seven officers for Metro Bakersfield, and we're attempting to get more gang officers so we can go to the outlying areas of Kern County, such as Lamont, Narvin, North Kern, Delano, Shafter, McFarland, Wasco, and get some officers out in East Kern, in Ridgecrest, in the Ridgecrest area. Well, our seven officers right now have a caseload up to uh, 35 each of majority of juveniles, some are adults because they turn 18 while they're on juvenile probation and we still supervise them. Um, but our caseload consists primarily of the more sophisticated gang members in Kern County. Um, not to say that other units within our department don't have gang members because they're scattered throughout every officer, every unit, and every division throughout probation. We just happen to have uh, try to focus on the more severe or more active gang members in Kern County. We uh, supervise them. We try to also gather gang intelligence for ourselves and other law enforcement agencies here in town. Um, just basically try to reduce uh, their involvement in criminal activity. There's, 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 I guess there's good days and bad days, but uh, like I said, it really just goes back to the people you work with. Uh, um, they make or break your day out, out in the field, the people, your, your team, the people you work with. There's been several, several situations that have um, given me some satisfaction, and those are uh, seeing some successful individuals on probation that complete probation and go out and become productive citizens. Um, 
It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. Um, and it's uh, very rewarding to see your uh, your work and their their work as well. And they become a uh, tax-paying citizen with a job and and uh, being a part of the commu community, helping the community out. It's a uh, that that's pretty rewarding in itself, right there. Our, our goal is to you know help them succeed but on the other hand you have to also remember if, if if they choose not to our job is also to make sure that they uh, are followed up with consequences whether that's uh, incarceration or whatever their situation needs because due to the nature of gangs they're just unpredictable it can be quiet within a particular gang for, for days or weeks or a month or so. And then all of a sudden that gang is a constant problem. Um, so it's more of a it's more of a roller coaster ride. It's very unpredictable. It's it's a um, day by day. me earlier in the shift what my goal was and the goal is to just to go home safely. Nothing else is as important as that. Finally, the Kern County Search and Rescue Team, with the exception of one sworn officer in charge, is made up entirely of volunteers from all walks of life. Their mission is their name, to search for and rescue people lost or in need. Our first drowning victim of this year was a person that could not swim. He went out on one of those inflatable rafts. Uh, it got snagged by some bushes or something and popped. Uh, he went underwater and was never seen again. And it still amazes me that people who cannot swim go into that river. Try to educate people and tell them that those inflatable type of uh, uh, rings or arm floaties or any of that type of inflatable stuff is not a personal flotation device. And this was an opportunity that, that came up and I was allowed to transfer into this unit. Um, I didn't know a lot about it in my younger days of my career um, and actually as soon as I got here I started realizing you know just just what a different aspect of, of the sheriff's department this is because this really is is completely different from working your normal uh, you know law enforcement type function um, you know people are glad to see me now when I come out and see them um, because we're there to help them Yo, go. It is, it's, it's, it's a community service. That's, I think that's why everybody gets into it initially. And the camaraderie within the team is, is, is pretty good. It's pretty good. I trust all these guys in my life.
Um, you know, they come from all walks of life. They're all uh, a bunch of extremely dedicated people. I, we couldn't do this search and rescue uh, unit without their help, so I'm, I'm real blessed to be able to work with all the volunteers. They're way more dedicated than most people I've ever run into in my career. So, But, uh, you know, they, they train for free. They go do the missions for free. Um, they're way more knowledgeable than, than almost anybody realizes about various things. So it, it's, it's a very unique experience to get to work with all these people that, that uh, have such a variety of skills. He's out here practicing. Me too. <laughs> Your first time, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my, well, my first call out was the recovery at Fraser Park in the mountains. Once the team brings back your first one, you're hooked. You're done. You're in for life. The search and rescue team train together throughout the year, training for a call that each member hopes will never come. If you're interested in learning more about these stories or other Kern County departments, please visit our website, www.co.kern.ca.us. On behalf of myself and our entire KGov crew, we hope you enjoyed this look inside Kern. Music